Hi guys, welcome back to my ch Oh no. <laughs> that thought. And we're back. I'm sorry, I know this is not the best filming setup, but I've been trying to make this video for weeks and I, n I never get the chance. Um, so I'm coming to you from baby on my chest, cold coffee on the table that I'm probably not going to be able to drink, um, hair unwashed in daggy clothing, uh, no makeup, unplucked eyebrows, all the good things. Yeah, just basic new mum look, basically. This is the only way I'm going to get this video done. I've realised I still haven't even edited my birth story at this point. Um, I'm hoping I will get the chance to do that soon and get that online for you. Um, right now, I am six, almost seven weeks postpartum, so I thought I would do a little postpartum update. Uh, things going well. Things are going normal for a new baby, I think. I am very sleep deprived, but we're doing well overall. Um, this is little Ada here. She's not asleep. She's just, she's just chilling out and she likes being here on my chest. I don't blame her. I don't mind her being there either. Um, oh, that little sigh. Um, so six, almost seven weeks postpartum. First, let's talk about Ada because that's the fun part. Um, she has grown so much. Um, so she has grown from, well, she was six pounds, 12 ounces when she was born. At her six week uh, checkup last week, she was nine pounds, seven ounces. So that means she has gained almost three pounds, basically, since she was born, which is just great. It was a bit slow to get started with the weight gain. On day three, she had her midwife weigh in and she had lost 11.97% of her birth weight. Now it's usual for babies to lose around 10% of their birth weight, but she lost just a little bit too much. And here in the UK at 12% birth weight loss, they readmit you to hospital. So that was a little bit um, unnerving when they said that. And they basically gave me 24 hours to get her weight a, a bit better. Um, at that point though, that they weighed her, um, my milk hadn't come in. In fact, while the midwife was at our house visiting and weighing her, I could feel my milk coming in. So while she had dropped a lot of weight, she hadn't had any of my proper milk yet. She'd only had the colostrum. Uh, but the midwife said to me, they, they basically put me on a plan for the next 24 hours, feed her every two to three hours and then pump after every feed and then feed that to her as well between the feeds if, if she takes it. And she gained... I think it was 380 grams um, in the 24 hours. Unfortunately for me, well, it wasn't really that unfortunate. It was just a bit uncomfortable for a bit because I was doing all that extra work, like pumping and overstimulating my um, breasts during the first 24 hours that my milk was coming in. I was then left with a bit of an oversupply. Um, so that meant I was a bit engorged for a couple of days because she, she didn't need all the milk that I was then producing because I'd bumped it up basically. Um, but then it's evened out and it's all fine. So yeah, there was that after her birth with the birth weight, but, um, yeah, they, the midwives were so impressed after she gained the 380 grams in one day. Yeah. She's just con continued feeding like a champ. We had some problems with latching in the beginning, um, but with some help from the midwife, we got that sorted. Um, also, of course, you get sore um, because you, your body's not used to doing that function. On one side, I had to use nipple shields for um, every couple of feedings, basically, to just give them a break. But I haven't had to use them in weeks now, so that's fine. It was just a kind of a getting used to it thing. She's just the average baby when it comes to her feeding and um, her nappies. She's producing the correct amount there, um, dirty and wet. And feeding, she she probably does tend to feed more than what I've spoken to other parents at this stage and their babies aren't eating this much. Um, Ada likes to feed probably every hour to every hour and a half. So that can be a bit intense. Sleep wise, I feel like I'm saying this from a good place because last night was actually a good night of sleep, um, but it's not been great. 
um, there are some nights where she will get settled to sleep and then she'll sleep for 45 minutes and then wake up. And so that's the 45 minutes of me having a fall asleep in my arms, transfer her to the bassinet, get back into bed myself after an evening um, feed. And then um, basically I'll fall asleep and five or 10 minutes later she'll wake up and that's really frustrating. Um, but that's just what happens some nights. And then other nights, like last night, she slept for a three hour block and then she slept for an almost two hour block and then she slept for another almost two hour block. Yeah, so sleep wise, not exactly great. Yeah, like I said, there's some nights where she refuses to sleep more than 45 minutes to an hour at a time. And then you'll be up with her, changing her, feeding her, rocking her back to sleep. And that can take 45 minutes to the other night. Dan got up for a feed um, because he was off work last week. So he was able to get up for a nighttime feed. Um, I'd express some milk into a bottle and the poor guy, he got the most unlucky feed of the night because she then screamed and was awake for two hours <laughs> um, before finally coming back to bed. And then she woke up after half an hour again, which was frustrating. So she doesn't like letting us sleep too much at night, but some nights she's better like last night, which was great. Uh, so yeah, that's feeding and sleeping. Um, development wise, she's such a kitty. She's just in the last couple of days, um, or the last maybe almost a week, she started doing proper reactive smiles. So not just gas smiles, which were cute anyway, but now she's actually smiling in reaction to us. Um, and it's just, it, it just melts me like every time. I'm like tearing up thinking about it. It's just, it's so cute. Yesterday, there was a moment where I had her on the change table and um, I said, mommy loves you. And she just broke into this massive smile and I was like, oh my heart. Like I, my heart just exploded. She has been trying to hold her head up since day one, basically. Um, and at first it was just like, she'd hold her head up and then boom, it smack back down again. And then it's gotten longer and longer, like seconds long. And um, now she's almost holding her head up by herself completely. So I feel like that's going to be the next thing. She's already, she's so strong. Her legs and her arms, I think it was five days after she was born, she had the heel prick test, the blood test for um, a couple of different um, diseases or illnesses. The midwives had such trouble trying to get the blood spot from her heel because she was just kicking so hard. Um, like kicking out of their grasp, like they finally got a blood drop at one point. And just as they were about to drop it onto the piece of paper for the um for the results, she just kicked her foot. <laughs> and we were just there going, Oh, hate her, behave. But she's really strong. Yeah, she's making she's starting to make noises that aren't just crying now. As well that's been the last week and yeah the smiles trying to hold her head up sometimes she'll try and like it looks like she's trying to start to roll over she's obviously not there yet but um it looks like she's trying to move herself she can spin like 180 degree like we'll put her down on her play mat and she'll shuffle herself around so that she her head is where her feet were <laughs> I think you have fallen properly asleep now. Yeah, you're asleep. She's had a little bit of a problem that we've been trying to fix over the last couple of weeks where she obviously gets really bad gas. Her stomach tightens up um, and she'll be lifting her little legs up and um, just screaming at the top of her lungs. And so I've been trying to, I've been keeping a food diary to see what could be setting it off um so far we we definitely know it like chili and beans like they're quite quite usual for reaction in a breastfed baby um but we also think onion and there's a couple of spices um so that's kind of sad because i love a curry <laughs> um me and dan also met in india so curry and getting an indian takeout is like a fun thing that we like to do a lot <laughs> um we won't be able to do that for a while while Ada is um, breastfeeding. 
yeah, so keeping a food diary to try and minimize that as much as possible because it's just not nice seeing her in pain like that. I know some people would say, oh, it's only gas, like it's fine. Um, but when you see them that upset and obviously in pain, I just, I, if there's anything I can do to stop it, I will. So that means I'm basically eating a lot of bland foods right now while we figure out what the problem is, like what all the foods are that are getting a reaction in her. I'm sure there'll be more we'll uncover, but yeah, so far onion, chili, spices, beans. As a vegan, that's uh, a lot of my food groups, basically. <laughs> I'm eating a lot of like stir fried vegetables with rice noodles and, and rice, um, which is probably good. I'm on kind of a health kick right now, I guess. Yeah. All right. I think that's kind of everything for Ada. She's just... She's a little cutie. I love her so much. More than words could describe. I wish she'd give me more sleep. <laughs> and I wish she wouldn't scream for like hours at a time when she has a little meltdowns. She does cry a lot more than some of my friends' babies do. Um, but she's a baby and that's how she communicates. So, yeah. Okay, as for me, postpartum... Um, I'm feeling really good. Um, I am six, almost seven weeks postpartum now. I gained 12 kilos whilst I was pregnant and I have now lost all but three of those kilos. Um, six of those I lost in the first two days after birth, probably mostly, you know, her, the placenta, um, the amniotic fluid, all of that. So another three since I've been being a mum. <laughs> um, I haven't been doing anything to try and lose weight. Um, wouldn't even say I've been eating healthily. <laughs> I have definitely indulged in a lot of chocolate, but the majority of my diet is very healthy, but I have been snacking quite a bit whilst I've been postpartum because breastfeeding, I've been so hungry and I don't always reach for the most healthy snacks, I will say. So I think it just comes down to breastfeeding and my body just um, getting back to normal after birth that has been what has driven the weight loss so far. Um, I'm not even that bothered. I've still got those extra three kilos. Um, I will lose them though. I do want to lose them, but I'm not trying to at this point. I was actually all already another four kilos heavier than my like regular weight that I'm happy at when I got pregnant. So technically I want to lose seven kilos now. Um, but like I said, I'm not that bothered. I do want to get back into some sort of exercise, but I haven't as yet. I've been walking a little bit. I want to get back into yoga and my pole dancing that I used to do. Um, and that'll just be fun. It won't be exercise that I'm thinking about, It'll, but it'll be a fun outlet for me as well. I really enjoy that. Uh, so yeah, that's weight. Healing wise, I did have second degree tearing and that was quite sore. I was probably, I was having paracetamol and ibuprofen for maybe a week after birth. Um, and not always constantly, like I would forget that I needed to take some and it wasn't until I was like, oh, I'm in a bit of pain that I was like, oh, I haven't taken it in like eight hours. And then I stopped taking that, yeah, probably a week after birth. I was bleeding quite heavily for probably two weeks. And then I stopped bleeding probably a week or two ago. I feel fine down there. I haven't had a look. <laughs> Don't think I want to. Yeah, it feels, it feels all fine down there. I think it's all good. I don't know. Um, never had a baby before, so it's a new experience for me. Um, yeah, physically, postpartum, yeah, I'm tired. Um, healing well. I do have stretch marks all over my stomach, um, well at the bottom of my stomach, and they do seem to be slightly fading, and I'm hoping they're going to completely fade, although I keep telling myself, like, I keep trying to tell myself, you know, they're marks of what you've been through, all that kind of positive stuff about stretch marks, but I can't help still feeling a little bit um, self-conscious about them. And I think that's natural. They are a, um, a sign of what I went through to bring her into the world. So I should be looking at them as a positive, but it is kind of hard. Um, 
I am hoping they'll fade though. They were really, really red and angry at the end of my pregnancy and just after birth. And they have now gone to like a kind of pinkish, almost purple. And then I've heard they go from purple to white and then you can barely see them. You can still see them, but you can barely see them. So I'm hoping for white. Yeah, I don't think they're going to completely disappear, but if they went white, that'd be great. Mentally, it's been a big adjustment. Everyone said to me before I gave birth, oh, you work in a baby room at a nursery, you'll be fine. You'll know exactly what you're doing. Um, no, <laughs> no, that's not true at all. Um, it feels completely different. Uh, number one, it's a newborn baby and I'm used to looking after a bit older babies, um, like at least a couple of months old. Oh, hello. Um, and also it's your own baby. When you hear your own baby cry, it's a biological thing. It gets to you more than any other baby crying. Your own baby's cry is biologically designed to get into your brain and make you even more upset about it because it's trying to like biologically spark that action in you to see to their needs. So I can hear her cry in a certain way and it will just send me into a flood of tears because I'm like, my baby's hurting, um, my baby's upset. But even just, yeah, caring for her, I think there's also that new mum thing of you don't always know what to do, especially when they're crying and you can't figure out what's wrong. You've changed them, you've fed them, um, they've had a sleep, they shouldn't be overtired. You're comforting them, you've got them cuddled up to you for comfort and they're still crying and screaming. Like originally when, when we, we didn't quite figure out that it was gas yet, that was really upsetting to have her crying and me not know why and not know how to fix it. So there were a couple of times there where I'd get really quite upset. I mean, it's emotional anyway. The postpartum time is emotional because your hormones are balancing out. You've got a new baby. You're sleep deprived. It, it can be really emotional. And I've talked to the doctor about that too. Um, I have had a few low moments. And with a past of having mental health issues, um, both me and Dan, my my fiance are very diligent about keeping an eye on that. So even though at this stage it's like, it seems like it's just normal sleep deprived new mum stuff. Um, we've mentioned it to the doctor anyway, just, you know, keep an eye on it and see what happens. But yeah, it, it has been hard at times. I will admit that. And I think people are starting to talk about that more that the newborn stage for mums is really hard. Um, it's the happiest time of your life, but it's also the most difficult. Yeah, she's worth it. She's so worth it. And it's getting better. The more that she sleeps, I had a lot of anxiety too about like taking her out in public, especially if she was screaming. I'd get her all ready. I'd get me all ready, get down to the car and she'd be screaming or get her in her car seat in the house and she'd be screaming and screaming. And I'd be like, I can't, I can't do this and just not go or, um, there was, my mum's been over visiting from Australia and we went to Sainsbury's, the supermarket, with her. And as soon as we got inside, she started screaming and just screaming and screaming and screaming. And I had her out of the, the pram, holding her and trying to shush her. And she, she wouldn't, she was proper screaming at the top of her lungs, like not just crying. And I was almost, I was on the verge of tears at that point. And I was just, I just had to leave. I, I said to my mum, I'm just going to go back to the car. And I sat in the car and fed her and um, in, in tears, <laughs> of course. But yeah, I, ha I, I think I was very anxious to take her out in public for quite a while. But now I've had two or three really successful outings with her and it's given me that confidence back now. Yeah, the first couple of times we went out with her were really good. She was sleeping a lot um, whilst we were out. But I think I had Dan there as well, so I felt like I had backup or something. And then I had a couple of times where we, we, we didn't even leave the house. We tried to leave the house and it just didn't happen. Um, and I think I was, I was really quite sleep deprived at that point and my anxiety was quite high. And um, I ended up just being like, no, we're not going anywhere. Hey, didn't I? And avoiding leaving the house basically. Um, <laughs> but now uh, 
the last week even, we've been on a few um, outings. Yesterday I took her out for the first time on my own. <coughs> oh, oh dear, what's wrong? Hey, it's okay. Oh, darling. Hey, we're okay. All right. Um, I took her out for the first time on my own yesterday and it actually went really well. And we took her out on the weekend um, to a pub lunch with some of our friends and she was like so perfect. So, oh darling, so my confidence is coming back with that. We're taking her out for a dinner time meal this coming weekend and I am kind of nervous about it, nervous about how it's gonna go, but I'm feeling a lot more confident than I was. I think it comes down to me feeling more confident in my own mum skills. Oh dear, oh. I think we're gonna have to wrap this video up here. That's pretty much everything anyway. I think we're ready for a change now. Um, oh, that's another thing. Cloth nappies. So easy. Um, we bought some a pack of disposables in case we needed them, and we have not yet. We've clothed the entire time since she was born, and cloth wipes. And it's been so easy. Um, we weren't expecting that at all. Uh, we definitely thought there was going to be times in this newborn period that um, we would be relying on disposables. But that hasn't happened yet. And fingers crossed it won't. I think that's everything and I'm going to go change her before she properly starts kicking off and then give her a little bit of a feed. Um, thanks for listening. Um, yes, probably isn't the most interesting video, but yep, that's postpartum. <laughs> yeah, postpartum is sitting in your pajama pants and nursing bra and ratty tank top with a baby on your chest to film a YouTube video because you don't get any other chance. And my coffee is completely cold by now. But that's okay. Alright. Thanks for watching, guys. I will hopefully be back with another type of video very soon. Okay. Bye.